hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin. You're with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. Ah, oh, yes. Hello. Hello. What's up? You know, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat today. It's hard to talk, but I'm feeling great and um, just over overjoyed about the episode today and, you know, the just how great we are. Oh, <laughs> feeling good. You know, overjoyed. Feeling I'm just, confident. I'm confident. I, I don't want to say What's that, wrong with being confident? Well, What's wrong listen, with being confident? I'm quoting... A our, song. No, I know. Oh, okay. I know exactly and also, what you did. That is our intro song. And I know. Also, sound alike. <laughs> also, do you think she's going to listen to this and be like, these bitches used a sound alike of my song? Anyway, and maybe they, she'll they just owe me money. Maybe she'll just allow us to use I the real thing. I guarantee that that won't. <laughs> I mean, she might. Okay. I'm excited. Let's get to it. All, All right. right. It's time for Good Week. Yes, it is. Bad Week. Oh, no. Um, I'll start. Okay. So I, my good week is that, you know, that Killian Murphy is my hall pass. Mm. And I saw a poster of this Peaky Blinders show and they were like, I have to be honest. Every person on the poster was not attractive. (laughs) Okay. Well, I dare you to, I dare you to watch the first episode. I dare you to tell me something differently. Killian Murphy. Yes. He's in Oppenheimer. He's like doing all this press right now. So I'm getting like full because he's not the type of celebrity who's like posting himself doing fun things on Instagram. Like he's Mm -hmm. so mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the only time he's out in the world and in the wild Mm -hmm. is when he's doing press and he's in a huge movie right now that Mm -hmm. I have yet to see but I it just it just thrills me that Killian you're back on the scene I saw this um, TikTok about how there's different types of handsome for men. Oh. Like oh. you're either bear handsome, dog handsome, eagle handsome, or reptilian handsome. And he was the example for reptilian handsome. Ooh, this is Whoa. cool. Yeah. Wait, what are they? It's dog handsome. Like that's okay, like I'll, a I'll give you examples. examples. Okay, yes. dog handsome is like Heath Ledger. Bear handsome is like um, the guy um, from the bear. Jeremy, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Bear he is would be the more rock? like no. Bear Handsome's like um, uh, Jared. What's his name from Parks and Rec? That was Chris on Pratt. The Last of Us. Oh my God, what's Will his name? Will Sterling. No, the big, the hairy guy. I have no idea who you're talking about. Oh my God, I'll think of it. Okay. Eagle Handsome is like, oh, um, Megan Mullally's husband. Yes. Oh yeah, that's um, Bear Handsome. Like where you love someone to like shed some back hair. Yeah, and they're like hairy okay. yeah. and like big and burly. So Heath Ledger. Then there's Bear. Uh, yeah. Eagle Handsome is Ryan Gosling. Oh yeah, bird like, like bird like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then reptilian is <laughs> Cillian Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy. Whoa, he and does like Timothy like and like Timothy Tim- Chalamet, total right. reptile. Like, reptilian. But see, <laughs> Timothy does nothing for me. Nothing. No, nothing. me neither. But I am past my men skinnier than me era. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty same. sure Killian and I have the exact same body type. <laughs> Yeah, he seems a little small. I think he's small. Yeah, okay. I think he's small. But I just, God, I love him. Okay, my bad week is that I felt like I was entering an era of motherhood where my kid is good on his feet. He's pretty agile. Like, I'm not watching him try to kill himself at every second of every moment. So I'm like, I could be out in our front yard that's all fenced in, and I can see him from everywhere from this one seat, mm-hmm. and I can sit on my phone, I could mm-hmm. do whatever yeah. and just let him. He's exploring Earth. He's yeah, he's digging in the mud. He's doing the thing and the mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And then he walks over to me, and he holds up his hand. Yeah. Oh. And uh-huh. he says, "Barbara, Barbara, it is her dried up turd." Oh my god! Amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Barbara poop. Barbara poop. <laughs> no. And I was like, no, (laughs) no. And I grab his wrist and I start shaking it because I don't want to touch the poop. So I like grab it and he's like (laughs) horrified. And I was like, no, no, no. Sucio, sucio. Because the nanny says it's dirty, like in Spanish. So I was like, because he only understands Spanish also. (laughs) And, And he's like. And I run him over to the to the Post. sink mm. and wash his hands. And I'm like, I've traumatized him. He doesn't even know what he did wrong. Right. Totally. Oh. <laughs> it was so <laughs> disgusting. Yep. It was so disgusting. Yep. So welcome to motherhood again. At least it was dried. It, yes. Could have been worse. I was visualizing had it been fresher that that would have been underneath his fingernails. There would have been almost, like a lot yeah. of things that we would have bleach would have gone on my kid's hands. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hard to decide. I Hard mean, to that's going to be one of many things. I, yeah. 
I was like, you hear about these things and you see stuff on Instagram and you're like, that's not real. I they just can't believe you're that. not using him for TikTok. Like that's an amazing TikTok. You don't even shake the hand. You go get your phone, you film it, you ask him to repeat what he just said. And then you, you know, yeah. there's something wrong with yeah. a parent that does that. Well, yeah. I feel just... like those parents are going to end up getting sued by their kids did when you they turn 18. S- well, did you see in, in Chicago, in Illinois, they said, they just set this law that if you use your children in social media, <gasps> You have to make money. To make money, you have to give them a percentage. Like you know, how child actors mm-hmm. they have that fund set up, so it automatically goes and gets saved for them as adults. I like it. They're doing that in Illinois. Well, it is. Yeah, it's making your child work. Yeah, so it's profiting yeah. off of your child. Speaking Submission. of profiting off your child, I'll go next. Okay. <laughs> um, my good week is that I have created a new verb for Earth. Well, I didn't. The internet did. Okay. On behalf of my parents. And your parents. Vanicking is now a verb. So my parents, you know, we, we haven't heard much from them online. I, I tend to keep them, at, if, unless dad's doing jort work, mm-hmm. I tend to keep them sort of out of the space. Yeah. You don't see me brunching with them the way the Vanix are with you. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was really funny because when Superfan came out, they were texting me, but they're like very parental texts that like don't really make sense. Or yeah. they're like, but they're really sweet. They're like, way to go, girl. We're watching. You did. And and then my dad Aww. has been like his only purpose in life is counting how many times they run the commercial on CBS. Oh my God. So he watches CBS in primetime for like five hours every night and he'll be like two promos at nine o'clock hour, three promos at like he watches. No wonder you're the way that you are. Yeah. I know. He's, he's giving, like writing it down and like, he's, 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 he's a data girl. He's, he's a, a data, data girl. girl. He's so he, using sheets. Yeah. You know? yeah so the in- Instagram, my Instagram community has coined this. Oh my God, your parents are totally vanicking you. That is oh so good. <laughs> they're like, you're, they're vanicking you. They're so supportive. They love you so much. You can do no wrong. Because you know, my mom will be like, she'll like, give you a she'll like, I was like, mom, did you see me at Miss Universe on TV? She's like, I saw you. Like, cause she hated my dress. Like, you know she's what I mean? like, that eyebrow was a little bit out of place. Yeah, she's like, you look like death. You need a spray tan. And like, she's, I mean, 99% of the time she, in private, she's so lovely to me, but like, yeah, but she gives you a note. She'll give me a note, but yeah. like, my parents are vanicking me. So, like, I whenever people are super nice and your parents are like, you could do no wrong, it now is known as vanicking. I That's love so it. That's so sweet. I, I love, love it. it. You're welcome. Okay. Cute. My bad week um, is that now with my new fame, mm. uh, I've been opened up to mm. all kinds of, you know, of course, the criticism and the celebration. It's, you know, bigger than ever. And I got a Instagram message that was truly troubling oh to which it said i would and i quote i would absolutely love to smell your shorts oh that's all and it led me to <laughs> i don't had, okay i have questions had the person messaged you before did they follow you brand Is new it a message man? it was a man brand new message um they do have cbs in jail that's oh yeah. But How, do they yeah, have Instagram, Instagram? Jail? Oh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> um, silly me. It's just, that that would have been just snail a, mail. It's just a weird thing. And Wait, like the reason, where's your jail mail going? I'm not getting it anymore. Because it would go to CVS. It would CBS. go to CBS. Yeah, I don't Damn. know. Like I'm, I don't. I'd I should... love to see if you're getting any new jail mail. If oh, you have any God. new suitors. Do they watch prime time. You know what? I should open a PO box. <laughs> I should. <laughs> Sorry, but what I was gonna say about this this weird compliment. I'd love to smell your shorts Mm -hmm. is like, I have to be honest with my fans right now Mm -hmm. and say, if there's one thing you don't want to smell, it's my shorts. Oh my God. Cause I'm 40 and I don't know what's (laughs) happening with my vagina, but like it, I'm getting nervous about this. Oh, I just (laughs) I don't wear an underwear with my shorts. So you get, you get full Kelty in that short. That's I think what he's hoping for. I yeah. think so too. Anyway, um, Vaniking. Okay, Jack. <laughs> I'm so upset. Speaking of Vaniking, this goes right into my bad week. So you guys know that I posted a video um, of our courthouse wedding. So cute. And my dad was Vaniking, and he, he was, was Vaniking, taking liberties. He was going all over the place, filming the entire thing. It was yeah. like he was on a steady cam. He was on. He was a like. Ste- <laughs> He was on like a 360 cam, like going everywhere. And one of the videos that he was taking, he literally got right up on top of 
the the officiant guy mm. and I was like dad get out of the way and mm. I thought it was so funny but in the video turned out amazing and so I posted it on Instagram and all of the responses were amazing they're all just like ha 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 Bill we love Bill right. and then it started going viral and then it started making its way to the Karens that mm. don't know me on Instagram and I started getting comments like you will appreciate what your dad did in years to come and be more embarrassed. You ruined the film by yelling at him, treat parents with respect. And then I got other comments, uh, basically don't talk to your father that way ever. Disgusting. Your dad got a great shot. You should be grateful for him. And the dad got out of the way. He was just excited for you. All these Karen's you need to set your do your settings on Instagram that but people no, can't then we'll have no content you're right no. okay keep it smell your shorts <laughs> dad, no. your dad you respect your dad I mean I need the public's what will I say on lady gang not cute not okay to disrespect your dad how obnoxious she's so rude so it was just so funny because it's like it's obviously the people that know me yeah, yeah. and then the, the random uh-huh. Karen's being like you will be so upset that you did this your dad will never forgive you this is crazy. Insane. This is insane. Only on Instagram. That wouldn't happen on TikTok. I feel like people get the joke on TikTok. Instagram. You do you, Jess. You do you. Wow. They're just panicking. Thanks for the views, though. Yeah. You know, that was very nice. Yep. Um, my good week. And this is a little late because obviously this is... I, I'm in France right now. We're recording a yeah. little bit ahead. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about my dress fitting and Kelty Knight yes, being please. there. I need to, every detail. Being... Kelsey Knight, like to the extreme, this woman, sexy, mature, <laughs> hates me, was getting literally in my vagina. So good thing I showered that morning. Mm-hmm. Like you were getting, she was underneath my dress, getting, pulling my underwear all every different direction, making sure every little seam fit correctly. And I just have to say, thank you. You really did the Lord's work. I don't know what I'm doing. Did you pick it up yet? Uh, well at this moment, no, but okay. yeah, I'm picking it up next week. Here's the thing is that you need, it's like being in a hospital. Someone has to advocate, advocate. for you Yeah, and you can't do it for yourself cause you're the bride and you're like, you're having this magical experience and it's very overwhelming. And like Jack, she had like a little, honestly, like, I'm so glad I was there because she, after the second dress fitting, she had that little mini meltdown and you had the exact same one where you like all of a sudden are like, do I even like this dress? Yeah. You yeah, know, and yeah. that happens to so many brides and people like wearing gowns, whatever. Um, and so here's the thing. And this, the, the company and the, where you got the dress, they're amazing. And yeah, this woman amazing. really knew her stuff, but they were about to send Jack Vanek down the aisle in, she's going to wear a, a no seam thong. And then her dress, because of the way it is, has a bodysuit built into it. But they were sending her down the aisle in a boy short bodysuit. Which is fine for some people, but you know, I'm an only thong wearer. Yeah. So it was like this. And then I was like, walk around, walk around. And then when I went under the dress, the boy short was stuck up her ass, like a big bunchy boy short. And I, she'd only know that if she was walking around underneath my dress while I was walking. Because I could see it sort of bunching, bunching. And I was like, what is that? Cause like that would drive me crazy in the pictures because it's such a beautiful dress and it just has to lay perfectly. And I was like, we need to change this. And then, you know, I have to be honest with you somewhere in transit, one rhinestone, <laughs> one, every part of this dress on a certain part of the lace has a middle of a flower that has one tiny, tiny, tiny rhinestone. And I'm looking and I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And then yes, yes, yes. What? We have a rhinestone (laughs) missing. And so I was like, we have a rhinestone missing. And they're like, we will replace it. I'm like, okay. She was, this is unbelievable. She was on one. Yeah. So good. And I was like, put your shoes on. And Jack's like, no, no, it's fine. I was like, no. I'm like, sit down. And then she's like, no, no, it's fine. I was like, you need to walk up and down (laughs) stairs. You yeah. need to see how this dress fits yeah. when you sit down. I was like, down. it's fine. I'll be fine. And no. she's like, no, no, no. We You're tried doing everything 15 times. We tried three different bustles. We had to have, you know, like the right bustle because the first bustle, I could tell Jack's eyes were like, I, I don't like a bustle. I won't do that. And then I was like, let's try a different, like a French bustle or whatever. And then you were like, kind of like, oh, I'm into this. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just... I would be I am, lost without her. I am a psychopath, but like, I was really happy to be there for you. And oh, the other sweet. thing that was so funny is that your dad came to the second <laughs> fitting 
And he panicked. <laughs> he panicked. And my, he was like, let's get a picture of this. I was like, I actually have my nose in her crotch right now. So I don't know. It's like, like, my, this it's is like, like my whole dress is, is up like by up my like, face. Yeah, yeah. Kelty is literally, her head is in my crotch. Yeah. <laughs> my dad's just trying to capture the moment. Um, my mom's like, Bill, this is, you got to not, not the not moment. be doing this. She not literally this was moment. like, Bill, let's it's like, like not- Bill is still auditioning to get the job as your dad. I know. <laughs> Like, this is the behavior that I have when I'm down to the final five girls at an audition for a TV show. So I am true. like, I'm showing up as my best self. Yes. I'm showing up early. I'm knowing all my lines. Yeah. I'm going above and beyond. Oh, my God. Because I want to be chosen. No, it's so true. No. He's but, panicking. And this is what I love. Like, I will just say, Jack, before we move on, is that I was very honored when you were like, will you come to the dress fitting? We even had to move it around my, my schedule so that <laughs> I could be there. It's yeah. important. But like... I just love all of our friendships because I think, you know, listen, we talk shit on each other all the time, but there's something very special about the friendship. Sorry, I'm so emotional. There's something very special about the friendship each of us have because we know each other so well yeah. that we understand that like you would never ask me to go meet for drinks no. to do like the celebratory I got engaged drink thing. No. But like, you know that my love language is like yeah. the sense of pride that I'm going to feel when you walk down the aisle and that ass on that bodysuit sits per fits perfectly. Yeah. And when it's time, like your mom, it was like so sweet. Like your mom was like, you're going to come to the room because they're teaching her how to do the dress. Oh, you're going to have yeah. to get me in that and dress. You know, the, the zippers are very, like very fancy. And like, I was like, cause I asked them, I was like, can you put a good zipper? Cause you know, gowns, yeah. like the zippers suck. They put these little dinkies. I'm like, can we put a real zipper? And they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay. But you know, your mom is so sweet. She's such a mother. She's like, I'm not going to know how to do up this button. She's like, you're going to come help. Right. I'm like, listen, uh, that's all I want in my life is to be needed for a gown. Yeah. It's you know, true. it's just a really it's special so thing of our friendship is no, like, I know. you know, and the other day Becca wrote me for some like legal advice. She's like, I need to know about this. And I was like, people, these girls know legal me. Legal advice. <laughs> legal trouble. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's this go. This is my love language. Legal advice. <laughs> okay. When we come back, we're going to get confident. The lady gang. Our guest today is someone who asked us to tell me you love me, and so we will. A Grammy-nominated, MTV VMA-winning, People's Choice Award-winning, Time 100 honoree. Demi's a force of nature that sold over 25 million records. Demi made us confident. Demi gave us a heart attack. She she (laughs) appeared as a reoccurring character on Becca's show Glee and brought down the house on Will and Grace, and we are sorry not sorry that we're freaking out that Demi's joining us on the podcast today. She's got a new, brand new record revamp which features re-envisioned rock versions of the biggest hits along with the greatest collab in the history of music, <clears throat> the main, obviously. <laughs> we cannot well, wait. Please welcome to the Lady Gang, Demi Lovato. Hello. Wow. And that was amazing. Kelty usually mispronounces something, has to do it again. Well, she kind of did. I know. S- depending who you ask, she said sorry wrong. Yeah, that's true. Well, sorry. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Canadian. Sorry. Oh, my boyfriend's Canadian. I know. Say sorry, From Toronto, right? He says sorry, yeah. Does oh, he do it? It's cute. He does. P.S. I listen. That wasn't even on my list, but I just want to tell you something. I'm very happy that you're with a Canadian. <laughs> Canadians <laughs> are good people. Yeah, they're raised right. Yeah. These girls, look at what how your lives have changed since a Canadian came I into thought, the mix. I thought you were really <laughs> look at how shitty <laughs> your garbage Americans. <laughs> no, that's no. true. Cana- Canadians, one Canadian really elevated us, and that was you. That's exactly. True. But, no, but you can only have one. I feel like like one is it's a lot. One Canadian. One Canadian. You only need one. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like, have you gone up to Canada? You've been through Canada before. Yeah, I've been. I've been to um, Toronto yeah. and I filmed Camp Rock and Camp Rock 2 there. And we went up to like Halliburton and like, um, and I've been to Vancouver too. Okay. I've been, actually, no, I've toured yeah, a lot. Yeah, you toured Canada. Yeah. You can't be a normie and like just go to the Shoppers Drug Mart, which is like our version of CBS. But if you did, like you would realize how slow Canada is. Like literally they're checking out and they're like, oh yeah, so you're having a good day. And I'm like, just put the tampons in the bag, <laughs> Jenny. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I need to go. Everything takes longer. Anyway, speaking of, we are here. We're very excited about this new album of yours. Mm, mm, Thank mm. you. And a lot of people are like, what is this era, this rock and roll era? But for us, we've always known you as this way. So Jack, take yes. it away. Explain I mean, this. It's in Demi's heart. I knew it's always been there. <laughs> like even when you're making like all the poppiest songs uh-huh. and like, I mean, chart topping obviously, but I'm like, mm, the darkness lives within you. <laughs> Can you- <laughs> and it's back. It's Can back. you tell the listeners your history with each other though? Because yes. I don't think anybody yes. knows. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you remember how we met. 
It was, you were so young. You were like 17 years old. Do you remember at all how we met? Because I have a story. Was it at the Academy of Show? Yes. Yes. <gasps> okay. Demi was, I mean, maybe you were 16. I don't know. You were so I, young. I, I think I was 16. We are at... The Academy is was definitely not headlining because it was at the House of Blues. There was somebody else headlining, but this band, The Academy is, was playing. And this lead singer, William Beckett, was a little <gasps> bit of a heartthrob back in the day. Oh, oh such a heartthrob. So hot. <laughs> and he was so nice. I just saw him recently, actually. And we were backstage after the show, and you were there, and you really wanted a picture with William yes. Beckett, like a fan pick. Yes. <laughs> and I Wait, was, were you already like. No, I hadn't ever met Demi. No, no, no. But oh. were you like. Notable I, at that point? Yeah. Was I? I don't remember. Did you have to be shy about asking for a photo with William Beckett? <laughs> I was just inherently shy okay. to meet him anyways. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. No, but you were like, it was on, like, the Disney yeah, of it yeah. all was happening. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. you're right. Camp Rock had come out. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So we're at the show. You wanted a picture with him, and I was still in my era that I was photographing bands. Like, I was taking pictures of a band, so I had a professional yes. camera. So I took the picture of you and William, and then your security guard gave me his number or his email or something, and I hit him up, and I don't know why I didn't just email him the photo, but I ended up printing out this photo of you and William. <laughs> Framed it, yes. put it in a gift bag, yes. and I met him at a sketchy gas station off La Brea like I was doing a drug deal to give it to him. Like from car to car, I just like put it through his window. I'm like, here you go. And then I had like my Twitter handle on there or something. And then you ended up following me. And that's how like we ended that's up connecting. So yes. And oh fun God. fact, I put that frame up in my room. Shut up. And I had taken a selfie, you know, on the photo booth. Yeah. You know, I had taken a selfie with one of your bracelets on. Yes. And fans were like, wait, are Demi and William Beckett dating? Because no. I had the framed picture in the background of the photo. <gasps> oh, and my God. And it was mortifying for me because I was like, surely he's going to see that and be like, why? Why is she stalking me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. So I was that. That's hilarious. I didn't remember that story about the picture. It was so funny. And the first, I remember we were like friends on Twitter, but you wanted to make jealous. And so I was like, you know what you do? You know what you do? You subtweet and you start talking about like some other hot guy. So you and I were having a conversation about like some guy that you thought was hot because you were trying to make him jealous. Oh my God. That's really These funny. These are my earliest memories of you. <laughs> I, have, I have an early memory. Jack, that was great advice. What? It was great to advice. Make jealous. Yeah. Like, talk about another guy being hot. Talk about another hot guy. Always exactly. does the trick. There's so many. It's like an endless pool. I know. I have a first story too. Okay. Um, so I remember Alex DeLeon from the cab yes. was at, he was opening for panic. And I remember him coming to me. My God, I don't know how he had a video. Like that's what I'm trying to remember if it was on a digital camera. Cause we all had sidekicks, which didn't take video yeah. at the time. He came up to me and he was like, you've got to see this girl this is the most talented person I've ever seen in my life. And you were in a yellow sundress and it was at a house of blues. And did you get on stage and then just sing a song? Oh, it wasn't um, a yellow sundress. It was an off white one. Okay. Well, but I don't remember what you were, you were wearing. Damn. I know. I know. How do I remember that? Do you remember but this? I did. I got up on stage at the house of blues and I don't remember exactly what I sang. It may have been daughters by John Mayer. Something. Or, and I you were was. wailing and no one, I think people knew you could sing, but it was like. Was it at a cab show? I don't know. No, I think the Jonas Brothers, like after a show or something held like oh. a random House of Blues show and I got up on stage with them or I, or yeah, no, I think either it was my own show or theirs or something, but I I want to say it was theirs and they had special guests and I was one of the special guests. It was crazy. So do you feel happier, better, like you are coming in to like your right self with this album? Yeah, I feel like it feels really authentic. It feels um, nostalgic for me a little bit. So good. But like I also, um, so I you know, was really inspired, obviously, from my past, but I was also inspired by a, a band called Dead Sarah. Oh, yeah. And they're they're really great. Emily's a good friend of mine, and um, she's just, just so awesome. We toured together. But I was really inspired by her band to go back into the rock um, scene. And then, of course, it was just, like, following my roots, so it felt natural. Do you feel like putting the pop star, like I'm thinking of you at the VMAs in like a blonde pony in a bodysuit, like doing that? <laughs> like, do you think, was that, was that hard? Was that, 
did you not feel like yourself or is it just different eras? I think it was a different era. I think deep down I didn't it didn't really feel like me. Um oh. I I feel like yeah, I feel like it didn't feel like me and in retrospect I can definitely point out points of my career where I was like that didn't feel genuine. That didn't feel genuine. This did. This didn't. And I think the leotards and stilettos were a, a phase of my career that I'll never go back to um, on stage just because, I mean, I, I hated dressing up like that every single night and performing. Um, but yeah, so – I but you were good at it. Thank you. I mean, she was fierce. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like it was an era. Thank mm-hmm. you. Like yeah, it was an era. era for sure. Like there's a part. There's a well, there's a place for everyone. When your yeah. trajectory goes from like the Disney of it all and the actress, is it harder as an artist? Do you think to find when it's like really authentically, genuinely you? Because it's it's I don't know. Like everybody, you're f- coming from the acting world and you're playing a different role, and that's who people fall in love with. It's you don't get to come out as an artist who people fall in love with you as the person first? Well, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Um, I feel like it had less to do with like being an actor and more of just being, getting signed at 15 years old and never really having a chance to like find myself artistically before Mm -hmm. I was thrusted into the Mm -hmm. spotlight with Camp Rock and then my TV show. And then, you know, kind of just already, I kind of, I did the best that I could, and I think that that was the most genuine, like, era of my career. Um, And then now, obviously, but, um, yeah, I think that it was just I didn't have time to, like, really find myself as an artist. I was just already in the spotlight, and then it continued. Like, it's never Mm -hmm. stopped since then, so um, it's been hard to, like, figure out who I am in front of everyone. When did you first get given a Jack Vanek bracelet? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, how did the bracelet arrive on you know I mean she still can't get a wrist. house did but I, how did maybe <laughs> I included one in that little bag I gave her I how did you get did, the and bracelet maybe that was, but no I want to say I had a, a bracelet f- at that show really maybe either you gave it to me that that maybe night. I gave it to you that night I always carried extras yes, on my wrist for opportunities like yes. this yes I don't remember. It must what you have had. been that night then. It's it must have been. So funny. Do you remember so what your word was? Train wreck. Train wreck. <laughs> yes. I, think I so. did have one. I did have one that was that said train wreck. I had a few though. Of course. Also, I'm like, this few. feels wrong giving to a 16-year-old. But, <laughs> okay. but I remember I had, what I had available. <laughs> I had written a song called Train Wreck on my first album. Yeah. Oh. And so I was like, oh, oh this is Wait, maybe I- fitting. I feel like maybe I made that because of that song. And now I'm like, all of my no memories way. are flooding back. I know, right? Because they were all like inspired by different like songs and right. song titles and stuff that maybe it, that was that. I would feel so honored if that's the case. I think it was. I feel wow. so honored. <laughs> I feel like, Becca, we don't have a bracelet. No, I didn't have an emo era. Aww, I know, unfortunately. Same. Musicals, you know, show tunes. <laughs> Just the <laughs> douchebag that I am. <laughs> there is a big crossover, I feel like, though. Well, yeah. There's a Glick there, bracelet. On the Venn you diagram, a, there's yeah. like a few, like, you know, musical theater emo kids. Yeah, I was on the Venn diagram. Them, but yeah, now yeah. I am. There is a Gleek bracelet. The main right. forever. Yeah. Yeah. The main forever. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the album. So, I, well, first of all, I want to ask you about the collaboration with the yes. Band. Yes. So this is so crazy because I literally wrote your team and I was like, hey, Demi's doing a rock album. I, uh, we are the people that can make this make perfect sense. Like Jack Vanek, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, everyone needs to know the history of the two of you because nobody knows it. And so like- we all remember you at those shows and that kind of thing. So it makes perfect yeah. sense. And they were like, yeah. And then Jack's <laughs> like, okay, secretly, something's happening, but I can't tell you guys what it is. <laughs> so, and she's such a good secret keeper. We were like, I was like, well, what does this have to do with Demi Lovato? I was like, like, is Demi flying to France to perform at your wedding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. So how did that, like, why the main? I'm sure you could have well, had anyone. The main obviously is from that era. Yeah. And um Blame has been my song of the summer. It's so good. It's so good. It's so so good. I was like, of course, this is like a collaboration that's meant to happen. And then when I posted about it, you had said like collab with the main or something you like did. that. And I was, I was like, doing God's work, you know. You were doing God's work. And 
And God heard you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. I think um, thanks are in order from the main to me. I, <laughs> but, but, but seriously, I was like, no, that would be a really great idea. So then it came about and I was so excited and I still am. Well, it was amazing too, because I think from when you asked John to do the, to do the vocals on it, he had like two days to do it and they were on Sad Summerfest. And he's like, I guess I'm going in a shitty motel bathroom in Syracuse, New York to film these or to record oh these God. vocals. Cause he's like, they need to get in and they sounded amazing. Yeah, they sounded really great. And the song is so f- good. Thank you. It's so good. It's almost like metal sounding. Yeah, it's it does. Metal. It's got very, those like really heavy guitars. Yeah, it's very dark. Which yeah. Which I'm like, it's, are like, are you going to play any of these songs? Like, are you going to tour on any of them? Like, what's the... What's the idea for that? So I wanted to tour this year, and then it ended up not being able to happen. Um, But hopefully the next tour that I have will definitely play these songs for sure. I'm like, that song live, it would would be be insane. It would be insane. Like, the whole place would go crazy. It's so good. Do you enjoy touring? Um. I enjoy seeing my fans' faces Mm -hmm. when I look in the audience and I see them singing my songs. And, like, sometimes I'm having a bad day, but I'll go out on stage and I see, that like, the smiles. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is why I do it. Yeah. It is a really hard job to do because there's so much work that goes into an hour and a half of being on stage every night. Mm -hmm. Um, And which can be, like, lonely. Like, last tour I got really sick, like, twice. Um, which was really hard, or three times, um, which was really hard on me. And I actually had to postpone some shows, so that was, like, stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was having some trouble with my voice because I was sick, and that Mm -hmm. wasn't fun. So it was, like, you know, it's it's not, like, my favorite thing to do in the world, but when I am on stage and seeing my fans' faces, like, that's my favorite. Yeah. You know, it's the rest that's that's challenging. I don't know how anybody we does know. it. We know. We went on tour for two and a half weeks. We barely made it out alive. <laughs> we were literally like, we were and never doing this again. Two, at the end, they wouldn't even go on the bus. They flew, and I was on the bus <laughs> by, went by myself with our assistant and our producer because well, they were like, I've had enough of this. This is a weekend. Well, that's the hard thing is, like, I don't sleep on buses. Yeah, yeah I can't sleep on a tour bus. Too, yeah, I yeah. don't sleep on the bus. Us because it's like every it's little much. movement, yeah. I'm like, oh, we're going to crash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I I get really scared on the bus and it wakes me up in the middle while I'm sleeping. No. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I love seeing my fans. But that's the best part. That's the best part. Okay. So we always on Lady Gang have collectively since we met through, you know, our mutual ex-boyfriend, we've always been like, stay away from musical men. Musicians. <laughs> musicians. Like, it's like, musical do not, men. we're like, musical men. <laughs> musical men. No, we're like, no athletes, no club actor. promoters, DJs, actors, or musicians. Like, yeah. no. And when Jack was after her old boyfriend, before she started dating Jerry, we were like, no, no, no. Like, business end with a jet. Yeah. And now- Their whole goal for me was to date somebody that had a jet. Yeah. And a yacht. <laughs> we had goals Didn't for Didn't get either ourselves. of those. Yeah. But, but now, you're marrying- a musical man. Musician. You, a musician. <laughs> you <had> a, musical. <laughs> <laughs> a musical man is in tap shoes. <laughs> I know. I was thinking of Savion <laughs> Glover. I was thinking like, like a Jackman hosting the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Oscars. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Musi- no. <laughs> musician. Musician. <laughs> yes. But we said no. Yeah. So what is it? And you're breaking the rule. I honestly, I think it's in our bones. Like it's in my yes. DNA. It makes so much sense that I ended up with a musician, and I feel like for you, too. Like, yes. it just makes sense, and that's, like, all there is to it, right? Yes. I. So my rules, no actors, no athletes. Mm-hmm. Actors, you never can tell when they're lying because yes. they do it for a living. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, that's just – that's a big no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the way that I met my boyfriend was actually in a session – Right. So he is a musician himself, but he also co-writes on other people's music. And so he came into the session and I literally was like, <laughs> who is this guy? I texted my best friends and was like, oh my God, the hottest guy just walked in. I'm like so nervous. I don't know what to do with oh myself. Oh my God, you're nervous? <laughs> yes, I was nervous. He was and really shitting his pants. Yeah. <laughs> he was probably like, uh, I hope I write a hit. I hope I write a hit. He, I was, I write he a hit. was just like so focused on the music that- I love that. Yeah. And so- Wow, very so pro. So we, we were friends for a while and then um, told each other how we felt and- and it was how long did it take to go from friend zone to like admitting feelings? A couple months. Okay. For sure. I mean, I think it's obviously Jared and I had been friends forever before we started dating, but like I feel like that's such 
Like you need that foundation almost. Yes. Especially for you and like trying to date in this crazy world. It's like yes. you need the friendship foundation because it's like you don't know people's motives. No, and like you really what don't. They're like and looking I've, for. I've dealt with that in the past of like people having different motives and it's just such a letdown. Yeah. So I think when you're able to like build that friendship with someone, the trust is there that like you don't really always get when you first start dating somebody. You yeah. Know? Dating is can be scary. Terrifying. Terrifying. As is marriage. <laughs> I'm excited for you, Jack. Excited I'm for you. I'm so excited for you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm well, you we've too. always called Demi our little emo child. <laughs> yes, I no, say my really? emo mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yes. Well, I've always like felt protective over you. Like oh, that's true. Since that's I, true. I've known you for so long, yes. and like I'm always like watching you from afar, and I'm so proud of everything you do. But like Thank you feel you. like my little my little emo child. I will forever be your emo child. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Speaking of musical men, <laughs> how do you call? up Slash for this album. You just call Slash up? Um, Slash. What does I've, Slash's face look like? <laughs> Slash's face. He, I've he, never seen it. You know you what I'm talking about? Oh, I guess, yeah. I, I think he's got dark eyes. <laughs> but he's, he wore his sunglasses in the studio. Yeah. Um, How do you see? That's so he, rad, though. Yeah, I've known him for a while. I met him the first time. Um, at, we were both at, like, George Lopez had a talk show. Many, yeah. many moons oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I showed up as one of the guests and I think he was either performing or was a guest on the show and we met then and, um, and yeah, I've just like seen him in passing ever since. And so, um, when it came time for this album, I was like, what a perfect collaboration this would be. And he said, yes. And I was so excited. So insane. So How is rock and roll mom and dad feeling about Slash being yes. on the album? <laughs> I mean, how's emo parents feel? Literally best choice ever. It's <laughs> Amazing. It's so good. It's so right. If you want a stamp of approval from like the bands of the world, like that's crazy. I mean, there's nothing yeah. better. What bands meant most to you on Warp? I know you weren't, were you allowed to go to the Warp Tour? I went to Warp Tour twice. Okay. Yeah. What I bands did, were like, what's the, what's the Warp Tour playlist of like, you got to have hands down by dashboard or whatever. Oh. Like what's like, what's the, oh my God. Is the one that means the like songs that mean the most to you or bands? Bands that mean the most to me, The Academy is. That's so funny to me. I had so many memories to The Academy is. Um, I also loved Paramore, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. How did you feel about that song about cheating on me called She Had the World? <gasps> it was a great no. one. No. Wait, I didn't know that. That whole album is literally Which about album? cheating on me. Which one? The second okay, one. Okay, I'm oh, pretty grown up. <laughs> but I also didn't listen to their second album. Because it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're that's shitty me. I listened to the first version. Don't <laughs> cheat on me. I'll ruin you. Okay, no, it's not about me. We're here to talk about Demi. And then <laughs> and also acceptance. Remember acceptance? Dude. So good. I saw them at When We Were Young Fest. Amazing. Oh my they played god. At 1 PM. I'm like, I'm getting there at 1 p.m. I'm they're like the littlest known like emo band ahead of their time. So good. Yes. They still slap. The used, my chem yes. my chem. I that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. There's a lot going on there. I love Ugh. it. Were you have? Did you have to like secretly go to Warp Tour because you were a Disney kid at the time? Like, were yes. you allowed to? I think I remember were people you allowed to know that you liked these skinny jean bands, or was it like against the rules? Or oh something? no, <laughs> I I like made it known. Okay. I didn't hide it. Um, going to Warp Tour was always hard for me though because I had to find time in my schedule. So when I was on Disney Channel, it was like I had no time to do anything fun. Um, and so I was just working if I wasn't, I remember for like two or three years, I did a, a season of a TV show, a movie, an album and a tour all in one year. Oh my God. And I did Jesus. that, I think three times in a row. And so I didn't get to make it to Warp Tour that often, but I went twice. I think the first time that I went. I was performing with We the Kings. Oh my God. <gasps> yes, yes, I do remember that. Because I had a Did song you? with them. Yeah. Cub will be a dream. Did I what? No, I never hooked up with them. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was Buffalo Hot Wings. No, that was from Forever the Sickest Kids. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh sorry. my God, I remember them too. I lost my virginity to the redhead in that band. Hilarious. At a Buffalo Wild Wings. At a, after a Buffalo Wild Wings. Sorry, after Wings. <laughs> after choice. Wings? After some How did that feel? Wings. <laughs> I mean, I don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> I meant like your stomach. Like, how did that feel? That's like eating Taco Bell and having sex. The whole thing was horrible. Thanks for asking. <laughs> very dramatic. Thanks for being dramatic. Experience. Congrats on the album. 
<laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Wait, what was your song with We the Kings? Will be a dream. Oh yeah, yeah. I oh, had a I, song with them, and so I performed with them, and then oh my god! And then we stayed. I stayed. Um, I was with a bunch of friends. We all stayed, and like I remember, I got tattooed on a tour bus that night. Oh my god! And then like we stayed for like. A bunch of other bands. 303 played. Oh, so good. Yeah. They're still good, too. Yeah. And then um, the second time I went was, like, I think one of the last few years they had it. Um, I was 18, maybe. So maybe it wasn't the last few years that they had it. But I was 18 and got another tattoo on a tour bus. <laughs> Just as like, one does. As one does. Yeah, when you're at Warp Tour. I've gotten two Warp Tour tattoos, so. <laughs> Gone to Warp Tour Twice, you got a tattoo. <laughs> Twice. <Both time. laughs> yeah. Wait, what were your tattoos that you got? Oh Do you remember? Oh, my God. Are they okay, horrible? Okay, so the first one is, like, this feather that's upside down behind my ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, like, didn't – I was – first of all, was – not in the right state of mind for both of these. Yeah. Um, the first, this one was, I was like laying down and it was like, it ended up, I want it, I want, I wish that it was upside down from what it is Who right now. did that? God, if, <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, and then the second one was like this kiss mark on my wrist oh. that I got covered up like yep. a few times and it was so bad. My little sister called it a butthole. Oh. Yeah. She was, yeah. Secret she, butthole. And she was like, she was like eight. So she didn't, oh she didn't know any better. She was just like, you have a butthole tattoo. <laughs> it's like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Great. Sisters could really humble you. They really yes. can. <laughs> they really can. Um, okay. And then I want to ask you about your life. Your life's crossing over. Oh. The glee. Yeah. The yes. glee I was like, my butthole? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, we've talked about that enough. Way enough way on Way too many Gang. times on Way too many times. Did you guys ever, were, were, were these things on your seasons or no? Same season, but it was when the show went from, it split where half the cast was in New York and then half the cast was still in high school. So mm -hmm. I was like still in high school. And Wait. Demi was in New York. Demi right? was in New York, right? Yeah. And yeah. Waitress at the Diner yes. with <gasps> Naya and Leah. Diner. Yeah. And what year was, that was season five maybe? Season four or five anyways. I didn't yeah. know anybody graduated from high school in Glee. They did. Oh. It didn't go over so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, we had to add some sparkle. <laughs> yeah, I was say, we really had to pull in the big guns. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. What do you remember of like? Was that? Do you remember? I don't know. What do you remember of that of Glee? I remember. We've got Adam, a lot of Adam Glee Lambert. fans that listen, so you. Know. I love Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert also oh, yeah. guested, and that's where we got to know each other. Um, he was in the New York. Um, storyline too, but um, playing Naya's girlfriend was like was really fun. She was so cool. Um, rest in peace. Like, she was so great to me and made me feel really welcomed on set. Also, Kevin McHale. So I actually have known Kevin McHale since Texas days. So, like, I since I was, that. like, eight or nine years old, I've known Kevin McHale. Like, oh, what really? happened in Texas? Yeah. Like, what's a so Texas day? So we had day? the same um, voice teacher. No oh. way. Yeah, I think that's how we met. Yeah, same voice teacher, I believe. And, or, like... Maybe it was an acting coach. I don't exactly remember how we met, but like we were in the like kind of performing scene in Texas. No way. Was Beyonce and there? No, <laughs> no, this is Dallas, oh, okay. not Houston. Sorry, I'm just um, like, like wow. she's Canadian. Oh, she does not know the difference. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh, and so then cool. like the first time that I ever came out to pilot season, I stayed with um, my family. Stayed with his family. How funny That's is that? So, so random. So random. Did you know that? Yeah. I, I think I knew when you were coming on the show that Kevin and Jenna, I think, knew you from before, maybe through Kevin. I think maybe, maybe through, Kevin, through Kevin, yes. But they were all really excited, and I knew Kevin had known you. And I want to say he also has a tattoo story with you. Did you guys get tattoos Did you get the show? <laughs> I don't think it was buttholes. No, we didn't get tattooed on the show. Not on the show, but I don't know. I feel like you guys, while you all were on the show together, maybe there was a New York trip where everybody got tattooed. I don't remember. Yes, Is I that right? So. Yes. I can't oh believe my I remember God. that. How many tattoos wow. do you have? I'm getting tattooed. I have so many tattoos. <laughs> you don't remember. Wait, do you know how many you have? No, because like, here's the thing. I've got like stay strong, mm -hmm. yeah. like stay on one wrist. Right. So is that two or so one? So is that two or one? Mm. So you I have like what? all these. I'm glad. I've, you know what? We'll catalog this today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, a list. I'm a data girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've like added on right. to other tattoos. So yeah. it's like, does that count as one? Right. Um, it's the adventure yeah. of your life. Um, we will see, see you next Tuesday. Tuesday.